So there are actually five principles that govern whether or not something goes viral or not. And I'm going to spend the next maybe five or ten minutes, uh, maybe a little bit more, uh, talking about this. So I like to call these the five C's of viral marketing. And um, it's because uh, I came up with five certain words that would cover each and every principle. And so uh, let's get on with it. The first one here is uh, creativity. And I don't know if you saw the Volvo, uh, Volvo trucks uh, viral that, uh, with the epic split. And the biggest reason why that went viral, meaning it was shared amongst a lot of um, users and it also got a widespread media coverage, was not so much about it being a great content piece. Yes, it was a nice video. However, the main reason for it going viral was because um, it didn't only have a story, but it had a lot of stories about the story. And this is one of the main concepts about using creativity for generating a viral. It's not so much about, hi, did you see this video on YouTube? And your friend says, yes, end of discussion. It's moreover about, hi, did you see this video, this really cool video on YouTube? And the, the, company, the, the, the person says, yes. And then you have to say, well, did you know that? If you're able to say that about some content, then you know that it has a story about the story. In terms of the, the Volvo viral, it was all about him having one you know, security line, the trucks were going backwards. So, <laughs> fuck. The story about the story is not only generating a high quality content piece, but it's also about generating a series of stories about the story that are surrounding this content piece. And what this does is it enables you to actually reach out to several different um, media outlets, bloggers, magazines, and get your video embedded there. Because it's still the fact that most of the views generated on YouTube are not actually generated on the YouTube website, but they are generated on other websites uh, outside of YouTube. And so in order to get those uh, high numbers uh, for your advertising and for your campaigns, you really need to focus on trying to get uh, your content piece shared onto social media, but also get it shared on the big high traffic media websites out there. Secondly, we have uh, conformity. And conformity is all about us wanting to be together or be alike. Now, if you create a viral campaign that builds on conformity, you really should have a look at all of those personality tests that are out there. So it's, what's my stripper name like? Uh, how much am I alike all of my friends? Uh, which of my friends is most alike me? Uh, and uh, apply the, that, that type of knowledge into a setting of your own product. Now, if you're able to build on conformity, such as, for example, the Ice Bucket Challenge managed to do, um, you're really onto something. Because what it does is it gives a person the right to say that I am like my friends. And that is one of the strongest reasons for ever getting involved in social media at all. And so if you're engaged in social media and you want to drive a campaign, and have a look at conformity and the underlying principles that we want to belong uh, and try to create the viral campaign from that mechanism. Third, we have charisma. And the charisma builds on the notion that uh, not that we want to be together, but that I want to be like you. So, for example, when uh, Gmail launched back in the days, they created something called the super invite and the super invite actually gave you the right to invite others to gmail and uh, if no one would have known what gmail was and they would have gotten an invite to invite others it would have been pointless but if you're good at using charisma what you do is that you send out the invite to a lot of popular people or to people who seem popular in the blogosphere or on twitter or on on Instagram or something like that, a lot of following, a lot of engagement. 
Uh, first, you send it out via email. You find your email somewhere by you know looking at the filter of their blog or just by you know hacking their website or something. Um, and once you have their email, you send them the invite. Uh, what you do next is you go to the press and you present your case, your um, um, your service. And once you've done that, now then you're then you're really ready to actually go back to uh, and if they post it. I mean, for Gmail it was simple because it was a new service. For Spotify, which used the same tactic, it was really simple to get publicity. It was free music for, for, for everyone. You know? um, but what you really should be doing is then to take the link to the published article and get back to the blogger or the popular person saying, you have an asset that no one else has. And by telling others that you have this asset and you have the ability to give that to them, it will also increase your popularity. And this is all about, this is how you build something on Charisma. So in the case of, of Gmail, uh, they, published, they, they created Gmail, they went out and they made press about it, they sent the initial invites, and everyone who then got an invite felt highly rewarded. And so then they went on to social media platforms and they went like, or into forums or talked to their friends and they were like, yeah, I have, uh, I have, you know, Gmail now, and everyone's like, "What? What's Gmail?" And I say, like, "Oh, well, it's a private network of people, and it's free email online. Mm, you know, I actually have some invites that I could give to you." In the case of Spotify, it became so absurd that people were posting, "Oh, I only have one invite left. Who should I give it to?" You know. So this is the notion of building a viral campaign based on charisma. Now, the third or the fourth one here is, is challenge. And what challenge really is, it's the most simple type of, of, uh, um, of a viral mechanism out there. And it's the, the, the idea that I do something to you and then you have to respond. Now, there have been several challenges out there. One of the most famous ones being Burger King's um, uh, challenge where you had to remove 10 of your friends in order to get a Big Mac or in order to get a, um, a Whopper and um, then a message went out to the 10 of your friends you had defriended saying this or that friend defriended you for a, for a Whopper. Now that's not a very nice message uh, uh, but there have been several different, you know, everything from throwing a snowball in someone's face to kicking a, scoring a goal and someone has to save a lot of those types of, of mechanics or, or um, uh, campaigns have been, been launched throughout the years. That's not very simple, or it's not very difficult. However, you can actually optimize this to get to, to work even better. The best case was the, actually the Ice Bucket Challenge that you know, just made huge successes online. And the reason for it being so successful was that it had a limit. First, it was, it was um, launched with both the idea of conformity, that we belong together. Secondly, uh, with the charisma idea that we had really popular people launching it uh, in the beginning. And third, it had a very strong challenge aspect. And the, the great thing about the challenge aspect was that it was limited. It was said that only three people should be invited by each new person. And so it actually was a high value asset that someone was given, although it was all about pouring ice cold water over your head. And so uh, that was the first thing. The challenge was limited, so it felt special when you received it. Now, the second thing was that it had a time limit to it, meaning that you had to do this within 24 hours. And so in order to ensure that a viral campaign goes on and on and on and on and on forever, uh, one of the, 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 the strongest reasons or the, one of the strongest causes there is that you limit the actual time frame in which people can respond. Uh, this brings urgency into the, the, the matter and so you limit it with three people and within 24 hours you know that at least one of those three people will actually go about do, doing this and so the viral never stops. That's the whole idea about it. So limit it to increase value and add a time frame in order to increase urgency for people to actually get it done. Now, the fifth and most fun, um, or generally when I speak about this, uh, is about cheating. And the, the notion of cheating really builds on popularity. It's about using all the spam techniques that are out there 
in order to get your content up uh, in vanity metrics such as views, likes, shares, blah 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 blah, blah. Uh, all of those kind of metrics that can be visible in the top list. By ending up on the top list you can then use the top list in order to go to a journalist or in order to go to a blogger and say our content is really popular now and so you should no uh, make notice of it because that will bring you more traffic to your blog or to your newspaper. This is what happened also in the, in the case of the Volvo campaign is that they uh, purchased the first, I think, I don't know, like five or six million uh, views, maybe more, uh, making it uh, into a news piece um, where they said that we just launched this, this video on YouTube and it is the biggest talk in social media, which it really wasn't at the time. But they could say that because they had 6 million views. So their pitch to the journalist was, we have the hottest shit on YouTube right now. It's gotten 6 million views in three days. And so the journalist naturally thinks, or the person at the media outlet naturally thinks that, wow, this will bring me a lot of ad revenue because a lot of people will come to my site if I put this on my site. Uh, maybe journalists won't admit being that cheap, but they are in these days, clickbaiting and what, what, what not they do. And so uh, what happens now is that the only thing the journalist needs after they've been given the fact that if they put this on their website, on their website they will become popular, is a uh, um, question of um, whether or not it's relevant. And then the story about the story comes back into the picture. And so if, let's say, Hollywood Press would write about uh, the epic split from, from Volvo, they would need to know why it's relevant for Hollywood. And the main reason for it being relevant for Hollywood, well, it's because Van Damme has done that epic split in three different movies. And if you search for that, you will find that article and that pitch was made to, to, um, uh, to Entertainment Press that this was his third, he had done this epic split in three movies and now he was doing it in one of those, you know, highly popular videos on YouTube. Then they did about the safety line, they did about the trucks going backwards, they did all of those other, uh, you know, stories about the stories, giving people a reason to say in a discussion with someone else, hey, did you see the Volvo trucks video? Yes. Did you know that he only had one safety line? Did you know that the trucks were going backwards? And that became the discussion and that's why it took off so fast. So this was a short uh, just uh, run through of the five C's of viral marketing uh, and I hope that you uh, get something out of it. If not, then just ask questions here on my YouTube channels in the com uh, channel in the comments or on the blog post which you will find a link to in, in this uh, YouTube video. Until next time, have a good day.